Hi guys, I'm Ollie from ElectroZoom. We thought we'd do a short little video with some quick scooter maintenance and tips. We've had your scooter a couple of months now, you might have not ridden it for a couple of weeks, but just like a car, bike, motorbike, they still need a little bit of light maintenance, especially something you're riding on, going up to a reasonable speed. A few things you'll need, lubrication, WD-40, GT86, anything like that will do. A couple of Allen keys, if you've got a set, even better, and also, the original Allen key that came with the product. Cloth, blue roll, kitchen roll, toilet roll, anything like that will also be handy. First things first, working with the most important thing is the brake. You want to make sure the brake is still a nice positive squeeze when you pull the lever. Make sure the cable is still intact, not frayed anywhere along the lines inside. This red cable here runs down the stem into the frame just above the battery on the baseboard all the way to the back of the scooter here. You want to make sure the rear wheel spins nice and freely. This one's a great example of that. Now if the brake, for example, the lever was a little bit soft, you'd need to adjust the adjuster here. Four mil Allen key. Simply pop that in there. You really don't need to adjust it much. It's only a couple of mil, either backwards or forwards. Just re-tighten that in the position you feel comfortable. Give the brake lever another squeeze. Still feels a bit soft, maybe go a little bit further. Obviously it's worth bearing in mind, if you've done that, give the rear wheel a spin before you finish, just to make sure there's no grinding or scraping noises. If that is the case, you might have over-tightened it a little bit and the pads are catching on the disc. Worth while you're here, having a good look at the rear disc, make sure it's not bent nice and straight. Again, if you are getting a slight grinding noise or it's catching in certain places, the disc might be bent. Sticking at the rear, you want to make sure that the rear wheel is nicely lubricated. A little bit of WD-40. A slight spray of that just inside where the wheel's mounted on either side. Obviously, you don't want to get any of this on the disc or pads if you can avoid it. If you do, it's not the end of the world. You just want to make sure it is wiped off before you ride the scooter and of course give the wheel a good spin you see this one's a great example spins really easily and freely which means you go quicker and get a better range out the scooter moving further forward we've got the front wheel obviously we've got no brakes to deal with on this particular one we have got the motor housed inside you want to give it a spin with the scooter off just check it's spinning freely there's no odd noises no grinding you go one step further, make sure you're in a safe environment when you do this. Turn the scooter on, give the wheel a bit of a spin and apply the power. They will make a slight whirring noise, but you just want to make sure there's no undue grinding noises or anything catching. Also have a look at the wheel and tyre. You can see it's spinning smoothly, there's no bulges on the tyre, nothing's out of shape. Again, just like the rear wheel, give it a bit of a lubrication just inside the joints. Moving further up the scooter, we've got the folding mechanism. This is a really important part of the scooter and a critical part to safety element. First things first, making sure the plastic safety cap is still intact, it's still there. It's obviously very important and prevents the lever becoming undone while you're riding around on bumpy terrain. That's working nicely, you can unfold the scooter. You want to make sure that it is a positive, quite a firm pull down. If it's too loose, too soft, result in a vibration at the front also makes it easier to come unfolded. Inside you just want to check everything's nice and clean, there's no dirt, grit, etc inside. And also you can give it a good lubrication, these are all moving metal parts. Any excess WD-40 isn't an issue, you just want to wipe it up with a cloth afterwards. If you do need to adjust anything on the scooter, you feel that the rear um, lever, lever at the rear of the folding mechanism is a bit soft, it's just this Allen key bolt here, you just want to tighten that. You really only need to tighten it, quarter of a turn, half turn, if that, just test it every time. You don't want to have the situation where it's too stiff and you're fighting to get the lever up, you want it so it's a nice firm, positive fold up but not too stiff. Working our way further up, we've got the four screws here which you originally put in when you got the scooter out the box with the tool. 
Again, you just want to check that they're nipped up. Make sure they haven't come loose. Don't need to over tighten these as you'll strip the threads. Just a nice firm nip up. That one could have done with a little bit more. That one's fine. Moving further up again, just want to make sure the lights are still working. Front light here working nicely. Rear light fully illuminated when the lights are on and it blinkers when you squeeze the brake lever. That's working perfectly. Next thing are the tyres, obviously this is a really critical point to the scooter. Now, you want to be between 50 and 55 PSI. Now I know not everyone is going to have a gauge. You just want to make sure they're nice and firm. These particular ones, maybe you could do the slight pump up, just a little bit soft. Uh, firmer tyres will obviously um, give a slightly firmer ride, but will obviously extend your range. They'll go much freely, much quicker across the surface. If you've got access, like I said, to the full set of Allen keys, that'd be really useful. We've got all these other bolts, nuts, etc., on the scooter that you can quickly check tension and make sure it's still tight. Again, I said you might need to tighten this one. All we need to do is just check that they are tight. You don't need to be tightening them any further. Uh, if they're loose, obviously tighten them up a little bit more. But, um, but if they're nice and tight already, you don't need to tighten them any further. If one has come loose, just make a note of it. If you want to check that one maybe a little bit more regularly, if you find it is coming loose, let us know. You can always give, provide some assistance. Alternatively, a bit of Loctite on the thread, if you've got access to that, might help prevent it coming loose. It just might be vibrations, bumps, etc., that's causing that to happen. Other than that, guys, that's pretty much the main things on the scooter in terms of this side of it. You want to check the underneath as well, make sure everything's intact under there. Twisting the scooter over, got the charging port here. You want to make sure there's no dirt, grit, etc., housed inside here. Obviously, there is every time you plug it in and out pushing that dirt a bit further in. So just give the uh, charging port cover a bit of a wipe and a clean. Make sure that's housed in correctly. Obviously the Pro's magnetic, the standard uh, is, is a fitted, fitted finish so that takes a bit more uh, wedging to get in. Also got the baseboard here. You want to make sure there's no cracks or damage in this if you've caught a curb, anything like that, bottomed out there is a crack or damage here that could allow water in. It's where the gubbins are housed for the scooter. We've got the battery um, and the main circuit board. Don't want to let water in there. So again, make sure that they are all tight. If you see any of these bolts around the outside coming loose, give them a good nip up. In addition, we've got the stand here as well. Just want to check that that's coming down smoothly. If you find it is a bit tight, maybe give, give it a bit of an oil up. So you've got your rubbers, they need to be looked after as well. We've got the rubber at the rear here. This one isn't essential, and a lot of people say this does break off, fall off. It isn't essential, it's just where the folding mechanism uh, clips onto. But these red ones, they're a little bit more important. Obviously they keep, keep the cables in a nice tidy position, but they also stop moisture, dust, etc. getting inside of, inside of the frame of the scooter. So guys, that's our general maintenance tips for the Jammy M365 and M365 Pro scooter. It does depend on how often you're riding and how far you're going as to how often you provide maintenance to your scooter. If you're doing a lot of miles a month, it's worth having a look at least once a month, if a bit less, maybe every other month. But it's really important to look after your scooter and when it will look after you going forward. If you're not going to use your scooter for a while, it's worth doing this, leaving it clean and fully charging it before you store it. The batteries do like being used, they do like being turned on, so if you are storing it, if you can try to get to it at least every two weeks, even if you're just turning it on, or just popping the light on, even if you're not necessarily riding or spinning the wheel, just turn the battery on and off every so often isn't a bad thing, making sure it's fully topped up. If you ever need any parts, brake pads, discs, spares, accessories, just let us know. We've got all those in stock, so just give us a shout. Remember to like, subscribe to our channels and social platforms. Comment below what you'd like to see next. And if there's anything we haven't answered in this video, we'll try to help you out. Thanks.